The Boss in the Saw Show. 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 Here we go. Today was uh, just a few days ago. Uh, the Mount West Conference laid their predicted, uh, you know, powerhouses or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're going to go over to the mountain section of the Mountain West. And first off, they went with Boise State to come take the number one spot in the mountain. Now, Boise State, they get Andy Ambelos for the second year. Second year coaching, second year at the school. Last year, he went seven and five. Um, My boy, Tim Plow, he's going to be offensive coordinator and uh, defensive coordinator. Spencer Danielson's, he's still there. Now, this team did have their ups and downs last year. Um, When they played great, it showed, and when they didn't play so well, it showed as well. They they took off a little early and fell flat in some spots. It, it was a real strange feeling for a traditional team like Boise State to be seven and five last year, but uh, they did play hard though. You know, um, on offense they scored twenty nine points a game. They ran for one twenty on the ground. They went for 260 in the air. On defense, they allowed 19 points a game. They gave up uh, 157 on the ground and 206 in the air, which is not that bad. So uh, they did survive uh, this year. They, um, that year, they didn't win the Mountain West. And coming into uh, this second year with Andy Avalos, Big Ragu, what do you feel about uh, this team moving forward? Well, here's the thing I like about uh, Avalos. He's from Oregon, right? He was the defensive guy over there. Mm-hmm. If I remember correctly. And yep. uh, they got they got a lot of upside. You know, all things run through our guy Hank, the quarterback. You know, he, like you said, 29 points per game. Um, you know, I, I think uh, this team does what it does. You know, it goes back to our way where Peterson was there and Harson. So, you know, I have a lot of, I think he's gonna do a lot of nice things over there in long term. But I I think um I think the, the, the number one thing that the thing needs to do here is to kind of get back in that championship form because it, let me tell you something, this, uh, the mountainside of the conference, you got three teams in there. You know, you, you got Utah state who won their first uh, mountain West championship last year. You got air forces always knocking on the door. Then it kind of falls off from there, but you know, Boise state, I think they're going to do Boise state things. Like you said, they'll clean up a, a few things. And uh, I think that, you know, they should, uh, I think a, a New Year's six, uh, a New Year, you know, New Year's Eve six bowl game is on the on the front for this team. They're a good, they're a good solid football team. Just they need to improve on the defense of side of the ball. I think a little bit more, which is uh, his forte too. So I think they can get back there this year. I think you know, all things being said, you know, well coached team, they'll be they'll be back on you know back in championship form. Uh, you know, I, I see I see like ten a ten win season on the horizon. At least nine wins, ten ten wins for this team coming up. Yeah, um, I don't know. I, I'll break it down a little bit more on the offensive side. They do get uh, Brackmeyer back, like you said. Um, Brackmeyer has some injuries. He shows some good games and some bad games as well. They also get George Jelani back on the ground, and he's a really good player as well, but uh, injuries seem to stop him at times as well. And this year they're not going to have as much depth as they had before. At the wide receiving position, they lost uh, – uh, Shakur, he was a really good uh, receiver, but yeah. at times he didn't show up, and some other guys did step up. Um, they're returning uh, a few players um, back, but they uh, do emerge some new starters as well. On the offensive line, they suffered. They were supposed to be really good last year, but they suffered from injuries as well. So this year uh, they bring in uh, Washington State transfer K. Bestford. And uh, the coaching over here should be able to coach these guys back into a good position to win some games. Now, on the defensive side of the ball is where I say they struggled a little bit more because of the uh, rushing yards. They got to get a hold of the, of the of the run. So the top two, Dimitri Washington and Jackson Cravens return, along with some Juco players on the defensive line. In the linebacker unit, they'll miss uh, Riley Wimpley. That guy was a stud. So they're going to really miss that guy. Uh, but they do retain Zeke Noah, and I was like Wimpley's uh, right hand man. So uh, he's a very talented player. I expect the uh, you know Avalos being a defensive coach to figure some things out for the for the linebacker staff. Then on the defensive backside is uh, where they did fairly well, averaging two oh six a game is pretty decent. 
but sometimes, like we said in the last show, you got to balance some teams. Uh, if you if you're getting good yardage on the ground, why pass? So that keeps the passing yardage down as well. But yeah. they get all starters back from 2021. The this group with a little bit of improvement could do a lot better. Overall, they have a uh, 13 uh, seniors. And uh, they returned in 15 starting players from last year, which is a great help for a guy like Avalos. I think uh, many of the players are are bought in to this guy. But um, on a personal note for me, I think Avalos, he has a little ways uh, to go building this team. To I, I, and I mean, they, they constantly wanted to mimic some of the past um, Boise State teams, but I think this guy is going to have it built a little bit different. And I, and I think, it, like you said, he'll increase a couple wins this year. Um, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure about the New Year's Six bowl game. Oh. But I think they're definitely great um, to get a bowl game for sure this year. What do you think overall uh, going in? Any any bad advice or anything with this Boise team? Yeah, well, I, I got to agree because, you know, it's seven and five. You know, you're talking about a first-year coach too, number one, okay? So we can't expect miracles right again, even though the traditions there, like I was mentioning, you know, the prior coaches with Peterson and Harson. You know they had their they had their stumbles along the way too. So like you say, auto, everybody automatically thinks Boise the blue turf. You know they're gonna get to you know championship game and and uh, you know it didn't happen for them last year. So it's, they're gonna go through their progressions. They're gonna go through their mistakes. You know the, like you said, the big play guys don't always make the big plays, and that's just all part of it of a, of a first year coach. But you know they, like you said, they have the they have the talent there. They have the returning starters. They got the depth. So you know just just. You know, making some tweaks here and there, you know, keep them competitive. And, uh, you know, I, I like them. Like, like I say, either either one of these teams, you know, whether it's Boise, Utah State, or Air Force, you know, they're all going to be right there within one game of each other come towards the end of the season. So I, I like their look going forward. I, I like them definitely to be in the top. But um, I don't know. I, I got my eye on another team uh Kind of a, I, I'm ready to lay a future on this one, Big Ragu. I, I got to pull up the numbers. I, I was gonna pull it up for this show, but I think moving forward.